you would join me in welcoming Mel DePoy. Numbers never lie, but they don't tell the whole truth. We've been taught this urban legend that the more fans, followers, and connections that we have, the more business we'll receive. Like all urban legends, there's truth to that. But more's not always better. When you look at LinkedIn as a tool, it's a communication tool. It helps you and gives you access to people that you otherwise may not have known. The purpose of social media is to communicate with people, not talk at them. Imagine, if you will, a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, we have the connection collectors. They don't care who they're connected to. All they care is that they have more connections than you, than you, and everyone else in this room. That's all they care about. They believe the urban legend. On the other end of the spectrum, we have those with a more conservative approach to social media. They will only connect with the people that they have met with in real life. As if social media is not real? Okay. While it's really amazing that the people at this end of the spectrum actually know everyone in their market, or not their market, their network, they know them, they like them, they trust them. They've networked with them. They've done business with them. They maybe have even been to their house. Both extremes are missing the point of social media. Social media is a communication platform. It levels the professional playing field. It gives you access to people that you otherwise may not have ever known. The connection collectors clearly understand the numbers game. The conservative social media users understand the relationship. True success in social media is about finding a happy medium. Leveraging a tool for what a tool is intended to be used for. And when you do that is when you actually are able to say, social media has helped me become successful or has helped me generate more business. Social media, like I said, is another form of communication. It is just like picking up the phone. It's just like sending a text. It's just like writing a thank you note. It's just a different medium. And when you begin to shift your thought process around, social media no longer becomes an obligation because it opens doors that you otherwise have not been able to open. The traditional challenge with contacting people, making a phone call or sending a text, is you kind of need to have the number. If you don't have their number, their direct number, not their gatekeeper number, you can't get through to them. With social media, you can have a partial name, a company name, a skill. You can have a job title. You can have a wide spectrum of information to help you sort and identify the people you're actually looking for. So today I'm going to share with you five quick specific tips to help you learn to leverage LinkedIn so you can turn your connections into paying clients. The first tip is LinkedIn is a search tool. Just like Bing, Google, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, and every other social platform on the market, LinkedIn 
organizes, it takes the information you give it, it organizes it, and then it gives it back to the other person who is searching. It's a database. The other interesting element about LinkedIn being a search engine is all of those search engines, all search engines on the market, when you type in someone's name, if I want to know more about Jan, I'll type in Jan McLaughlin into a search engine, and it doesn't matter which one, they all search LinkedIn first. Every single one of them. The search engines learn who you are and what you know based on what your LinkedIn profile says. When you are intentional about setting up your profile correctly and engaging on LinkedIn, not only will you create the opportunity to generate more business, you will also boost your SEO or your search engine optimization. Tip two, make your messages personalized. When you send a connection request, you probably already know that you should personalize the message. But do you know the one message you should not send? This is where you guys say yes or no. Yes. <laughs> no. no, you don't know that no. message? <laughs> the message you should not send is, because you are a person that I trust, I would like to connect with you on LinkedIn. Why? If I know you, that sounds stupid. If I don't know you, you've never commented on any of my articles. You've never engaged with me on, link on LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook or any other social platform I'm involved with. How can you possibly trust me? What that message actually tells me is that I can't trust you. What do you do when you receive a message, a LinkedIn connection request from somebody that you do not know? How do you handle it? You ignore it? Okay. You, go, you look at their profile? Okay. What else? I evaluate, I evaluate if it's someone I want to know and see the purpose behind it. Okay. I look at two things, the number of connections, because if they have no connections, then I ignore them. And the other thing is I look at it if, they're, if they look like they're somebody who's only going to try and sell me something, then I ignore them. Okay. Here's a way that you can take every suggestion that you just gave me and compile it into a process to help you be intentional about engaging with people on LinkedIn. Remember, people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. In order to get to trust, you have to get to know them. In order to do that, you actually have to communicate with them. You can reply, do not accept to their connection request with a message like this. Dear Janelle, thank you for reaching out. I am happy to connect with you. May I ask how you heard about me and why you are interested in connecting? What this will do is it will open the door for communication. It will tell your connections that you actually want to know the people you're connected to. Revolutionary concept, I know, just invented, so you're the first to hear about it. <laughs> Last time you logged into LinkedIn, did you receive one of those bulk messages that it was sent to everybody and was so overly generic you had no idea what to do with it? It wasn't personalized. A client of mine kept receiving these messages from Brenda. Brenda would send bulk messages to everybody in her connections. She had over a thousand connections and she would send it to all 1,000 of them. 
in smaller groups so she didn't get in LinkedIn trouble. But that's what she would do. Her message subject line was more blog post title instead of email subject line title. When you opened and you looked at the message, it was literally a two-page stream of words. And I know this because I copied and pasted it into Word because I wanted to see how long this really was. If that wasn't bad enough, it was awful writing. It read as if she w wrote for the search engines in the 90s. It was a bunch of keywords and industry buzzwords all strung together. Okay, let's step back. You're the one receiving this message. What do you do? You have no idea why this person sent it to you. You have no idea what you're supposed to do with it. And worse yet, what does that do for your perception of credibility of that person? It makes you second guess it. So when you send messages on LinkedIn, sending a message on LinkedIn is just like sending an email. It allows you to be personalized. It allows you to be more business casual. And you don't have to have all of your contact information in there because the link to your profile is right there. They can get all of that information just from clicking on your photo. Tip three, communicate with, don't talk at people when you participate in groups. I often hear, why would I want to belong in groups? That's just another thing I, wanted, I have to do. Participating in groups is actually how you generate business. Because people get to see how you think and how you approach your expertise. Yes, it is very easy to set it up that every time you release a new blog post, that it automatically posts to the all 50 groups that you belong to. That's really easy to do. However, remember our goal is to communicate with, not talk at. So when, when you do that and you automate your blog posts, what it actually says is, sales pitch, do not read, sales pitch, do not read. And you've seen this. You've gone into groups, and when you scroll down and look at all the discussions, all you see are a bunch of article links. No one's actually communicating. That's how you know it's not a good group to be a part of. It sends the wrong message. These are people talking at people instead of communicating with people. So when you participate in a LinkedIn group, whether you are sharing an article or starting a new conversation or discussion as it's technically called, explain the why. Why are you sharing this? Why are you starting this discussion? Why are you sharing this in this, in this group? It's the why that makes it personal. It's the why that tells the other members of the group that you actually want to engage with them. Pretty amazing. Personalize your messages. Remember a business conversational tone and don't make the assumption that people know your jokes. You know your sense of humor, your immediate connections or your immediate colleagues know your sense of humor. But your sense of humor is not always conveyed when you're participating in groups. Tip four, LinkedIn Pulse. Pulse is LinkedIn's blog. LinkedIn Pulse is not a replacement for your blog. Not at all. It is not a format for copying and pasting your 
blog posts that you are releasing today and publishing on Pulse the same day. Some of you may remember about five years ago, the search engines changed their algorithm. And what they did is they started to change the priority or the credibility of sites that had reused content. So sites like Ezine Articles was hit the hardest. Their search engine ranking tanked in a matter of hours because of the search engines changing their algorithms. It is okay to repurpose your content, but you want to stagger when you're sharing them on your blog versus on LinkedIn Pulse. Also, publishing to Pulse is another marketing touch point. If someone you're not connected to stumbles upon your article, they'll read it, they, if you're lucky they'll comment, they'll like it, and then they'll click through and look at your profile. They want to learn more about you because you are amazing, Kim. Okay, well they're on Kim's profile and now they want to go and look at Kim's website to learn more about Kim. Well, if when they get to your website, they see the exact same content as what they've already discovered, that's a showstopper. There's no reason for them to continue. They've learned everything they can learn about you. It's okay to repurpose your content, but do not release repurposed content at the same time. You do also want to keep it that your blog is your home base because that will continue to build credibility in the search engines for your website to make your website not stagnant. Tip five, yes, LinkedIn endorsements matter. The number one question I am asked is, well, question asked versus frustration is, I hate LinkedIn endorsements. What is the purpose of them? When LinkedIn first started, they would ask you what your skills are. What are you an expert in? You would tell LinkedIn, I'm an expert in this, I'm an expert in this, I'm an expert in this, and I'm an expert in this. LinkedIn said, great! Now we know how to categorize you, so when people come to LinkedIn and they search you, search out these skills, you're gonna come up at the top. And you're like, yeah, that's great, I'm gonna get business because I came up at the top. Well, the people who realized that LinkedIn is a search engine applied SEO techniques to filling out the profile and skewed the results. So LinkedIn had to go back to the drawing board and rethink this. Okay, certain people are skewing our results and it's creating an unfair advantage, which is against the purpose of LinkedIn. So how do we change this? How do we create or re keep the level playing field that LinkedIn is supposed to provide? We're going to roll out endorsements. We're not going to tell anybody about endorsements, but we're going to roll them out. <laughs> Yes, I completely agree. Endorsements, they were rolled out horribly. And the average LinkedIn user has no idea what they are or how to use them. They just know that when they log into LinkedIn at the top of their screen, it says, would you like to endorse Laura for cooking? And you're like, sure. Laura, clearly LinkedIn must want Laura endorsed for this, or Laura must want to be endorsed for cooking. And cooking has nothing to do with Laura's business. So you click endorse. What LinkedIn is doing is they said, okay, you've said you're an expert in these skills. I'm now going to ask your first degree connections if what you say is actually true. The more endorsements that you have, the more credibility and the more of an expert you are perceived in the eyes of the search engines, LinkedIn included. Having said that, yes, the more endorsements, the better, but it's not search engines 
that are actually looking at your profile. It's people. It's you. It's you. And it's me looking at your profile. If I see that your mom has endorsed you, that doesn't exactly convey credibility. You have complete control over what endorsements are visible on your profile and what who's endorsed you, their visibility as well. So if for some reason you did decide to connect with your mom and she's endorsed you for everything under the sun, you can go in and you can hide her endorsements and she will never know. She'll feel excited because she got to help you and you get to have the confidence that your mommy is not saying that you are good at what you do. Like all urban legends, there is truth and there is misconception. LinkedIn is a communication platform that gives you the opportunity to build relationships with people that you know and also have yet to know or yet to meet. If you think about the time that it actually takes to meet someone for coffee, you drive to from your office. You have that hour or so coffee time. Maybe your meeting starts a little late. Maybe it runs a little late. And then you have your drive back to the office. You could be losing a minimum of two hours for every coffee meeting you have scheduled. With strategic and intentional LinkedIn activity, you can build multiple relationships in a fraction of the time, turning your connections into paying clients.